Hello my loves, welcome back for another video. And today's video is sponsored by Mosh. You know, I've been so inspired recently on just the content that is being made in helping women elevate, grow, and evolve. And I know that at times it can sound repetitive, but I really think that sometimes we need that constant reminder to drill into our heads that living an intentional, abundant, beautiful, amazing life is truly possible. I have been in such a great place recently. I feel like you guys can all see it. I have been told on pretty much all my platforms that I seem lighter, happier, and more fulfilled. And the truth is, it's because I am. I have really shifted my mindset and perspective on a lot of things recently. And I feel like I'm a great person to pretty much guide you in the direction of truly embarking on living an abundant and fulfilling life as someone who was living in a scarcity mindset for a very long time, someone who just wasn't able to truly tap into my untapped potential. I feel now that I am so much closer to the best version of myself and it really has just taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, and truly just being intentional. So I want to tell you guys today eight ways you can intentionally start living a more abundant life and it to be fulfilling, happy, and just welcoming in new opportunities and moments. If you look forward to these types of girl chats, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. I love making them. I love that you guys chime in down in the comments. Please sound off down below. Let's get into the tips. I got a lot to say. Hey guys, so let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Mosh. This has been my new favorite breakfast when I am really wanting to focus and make sure I'm getting my protein for the day. I'm not much of a breakfast person, so I was a little hesitant, but when they sent me these three different plant-based options, which are the banana bread, then I have the apple cinnamon, and then the last one, which this one I ate yesterday morning and it's still here on the counter, and it is the peanut butter chocolate one. Guys, I am up obsessed with these bars. Not only are they low calorie, in my personal opinion, 170 for this and then 150 for this bar. So what's really great about these Mosh protein bars is they are advertised to be really good for your brain health, which I love. It's a great way that I start my day. It allows me to be more alert and ready to conquer. It also is my protein for the day. And I find that these are really amazing flavors. Of course, you guys can pick up ones that are not plant-based, but as someone who only eats plant-based in the house, it is something that I really like to just have on me and it's just a very delicious bar. Also, this particular company was very near and dear to my heart when I heard their mission, which it actually has it written here on the bar, which says, together with your purchase, we will help fund Alzheimer research. I think that that really resonated with me. If you guys have been following me, then you guys know that my grandfather passed away a few months ago and he suffered from memory loss and it was something that was really difficult on my family. And for me, I think that this is just a wonderful cause also with just eating something that is delicious. So I love what they stand for. I love the mission that they have going on. And I also just love the actual protein bar itself. So I think you guys are going to like it as well. And if you guys want to try it, of course, you guys can go to moshlife.com slash Haley Gamba and you will get 20% off your purchase of the plant-based trial pack and free shipping. I think you guys are really going to love it. They are very delicious. Definitely make your morning routine just that much better by trying out these breakfast bars. You guys will absolutely love them. Number one in living a more abundant and fulfilling life is intentional living. It's time for you to start making decisions based on your core values, your beliefs, and your goals. These are crucial things to live by when you want to live more abundantly and you want to welcome in new experiences and a lot of blessings. When I started being more intentional with my time, my effort, my energy, and what I pour into was when my life started to welcome in better opportunities that were more fit and tailored into what I was trying to tap into more. Are you waking up at the hour that best serves the future version of yourself? Are you setting goals and trying to achieve them every month? Are you someone who has strong core values and beliefs that you live by? These are all things that I want you to really sit with yourself and think about. I remember when I wanted a lot, but I wasn't actually working on myself. I wasn't intentional about my time, energy, and how I was using it. I felt like I was lazy. I lacked discipline. I was someone who had a scarcity mindset. I was angry. I was gossiping. I just wasn't doing anything that was serving 
the purpose that I was trying to seek. When you start to actually live every single day like the person who ends up getting the thing that you want, you get closer to actually receiving it. Number two to living an abundant life and a more fulfilling one at that is to become an expressed woman or man. Now I know that I have men watching this channel, so I'm trying to include you guys in these chats. I hope that you see me trying. I normally will speak to women, but I understand that there are so many different people watching. So I want you to become a more expressed person. What is an expressed person, you ask? I wrote them down. Qualities of someone who's expressed. Authentic, creative, self-assuring, playful, magnetic, and secure. These are all qualities of someone who expresses themselves well. It's time for you to not limit yourself, to not walk through life stifled, to be too reserved, to be not open-minded. You want to start tapping into these qualities. A lot of the time, it's your lack of traits that you're not possessing that are preventing you from living abundantly. If you are closed-minded, if you are too reserved, if you are angry, if you are possessive, if you are someone who lacks a healthy aura and energy, how do you expect your life to have abundance? I think it's time to really sit with yourself and say, okay, what can I work on? What are some tangible things that I can start to do right now that will allow me to express myself better and be received by the universe, by God, and by experiences? You want to be someone who is able to be received. I have found that when I became more magnetic, so many better things were happening for me. I was getting the man I wanted. I was getting the money I deserved. I was getting the opportunities that I was seeking. I was becoming a more decisive person and I was able to see my decisions turn into blessings. Become an expressed person and you will see your life transform. It's time to tap into those qualities. Number three, to live an abundant and fulfilling life is to have a glass half full mindset. A lot of this is going to be something that you're going to have to unlearn. I think that naturally we as people are very anxious. We are impatient. We feel ready for something but are angry that it's not here at the moment. I want you to start practicing gratitude, even in the hard times. Because the truth is, when you are grateful, you have a glass half full mindset versus half empty. You're seeing things for what they are. You're seeing that in the hard times, you're building grit, you're building strength. I understand that right now it feels like your back is against the wall, life is difficult for you, you don't really see the things that you're putting into action coming into fruition. I promise you, it's an own lane, own race, own pace kind of game for you guys. Comparison is a thief of joy. Do not compare yourself to what your peers are doing. God is purposefully putting you on this path because it's the path that is best for you. Unfortunately, sometimes we have a path of more resistance than others. Because listen, I have met people who have had an easier time in life than me. I don't like to say that, but from what they have shared, a lot of the times they are given things a little bit easier and sometimes their timelines are shorter than mine. But instead of me possessing envy and jealousy, what I do is I say, yes, I love that for you, but what I needed was a little bit more. I needed a little bit more time to grow. I needed to develop patience. It's time for you to realize that your journey is not linear with someone else's and to not compare. So a great way to stop the comparison is to create the glass half full mindset. This is happening to me versus this is happening for me. Which one sounds better? Something happening for you. Your journey is supposed to go in this way. Be patient and be persistent. Number four for living an abundant and fulfilling life is to decenter your life from men, but you can still be open. Conversations about men are running rampant. I am someone who loves to talk about dating as well. It's not really my topic of choice, but sometimes I will put it into a few of my videos. The truth is my life does not revolve around men and my life does not revolve around dating. I date occasionally, but I also tap into my own things more. Decentering your life around men will make your life more abundant and fulfilling. You're trying so hard to seek a partner to escape the journey that you have within. Partners should be an addition. I saw this little clip online of Nene Leakes, who I love and adore from Real Housewives of Atlanta. She's like one of my favorite characters. And I didn't see the full video, but I believe that she was crying over being single for the first time in her life. And 
it being hard and navigating those troubles. And although I do understand how difficult it must be to be without someone, it is time to tap into your self-love. It's only because you are lacking in your personal life that you feel like having a person in it makes it whole. Your life should be whole on its own. I hate when I get comments or judgments from people who are like, you should be married. You should care about being with someone. It's like, yes, we can all get there. We have the rest of our lives to be there. Decenter your life from men at the moment. It does not need to be the full focus of your life. When has focusing solely on a man ever done anybody any good? When? What happens when they leave? What happens if they change? What happens if something goes on? Who are you at the end of the day if that is your sole focus? You wanna live abundant? You wanna have a fulfilling life? Be open to dating. Don't be jaded. Don't be mad. Don't feel this pressure to you know, make decisions that are black and white. Allow time to pass. Allow time to grow. Allow experiences to come to you and be in the art of receiving. That is really my stance on dating. So you guys know me. I will always be open to meeting a wonderful man. I meet wonderful men all the time. But my life does not revolve around them like they used to, and I feel like I glow better because of that. I've been glowing more since not stressing over somebody's son at night. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Number five is to let go of your scarcity mindset. Let me read some things that are... Scarcity mindset in nature, I wanna give some examples. I wrote them down. You're attached to outcomes. You're obsessing over how you look right now and you equate that to success. You're focusing on competition. I want you to have more of an abundant thinking. Examples, long-term focus. Scarcity mindset is short-term focus. You wanna have long-term focus. Another way to abundantly think is to think big, but also embrace risks. Now, I'm not saying to fear risks or to anticipate the worst. You want to embrace them. Last thing for abundantly thinking is to trust the process. You want to allow yourself to be open to whatever comes with the journey that you are trying to conquer. Although some roads might be bumpy, although sometimes can be difficult, it will get you to where you need to go because that is what it's supposed to be. Nothing in life comes easy, my friends. You must suffer before you become abundant. That is something I had to learn the hard way. So in my suffering, I learned to embrace the beauty in it. I learned that it made me have a healthy fear in ever reverting back to being someone who struggled and had scarcity mindset. Now I push forth every day in making sure that I practice abundance and gratitude. Number six for living abundant. And having a fulfilling life is to protect your energy. This is huge, guys. Like, we need to protect our energy. Energy is so big, it rules your life. So even as small as something like living somewhere where there's sun, the vitamin D makes me happy. It makes me motivated. So I've always been very fixated on making sure that if I know I'm working from home, my home has to be bright and feel good and be motivating. Another way to protect your energy, random things, is to take time for yourself, balance your life. It's okay to love. It's also okay to move on. It's okay to change the order of things in your life. That is simple ways to protect your energy. You want to also Not allow people to penetrate your space if they are negative or in a hard place. That's not to say that we are not empathetic or concerned, but we are not going to let it penetrate our healthy bubble. Who you surround yourself with and the external things in your life will really affect your energy, so be mindful of that. Number seven, and this is a big one for all my ladies out there who have a lot of generational curses or trauma from their past that has made them more masculine in nature. To live a more abundant and fulfilling life, number seven is to tap more into your feminine energy and rest in it. Allow someone to lead you. Stop trying so hard. Rest your body. Dissolve patterns that stem from fear that were in your masculine. I have written here some wounded masculine traits that we can try to dissolve being overly critical, being aggressive, being controlling. I want you to start being more receptive, intuitive, and vulnerable. 
It's easier said than done, but I really think that it's time to just rest in your feminine energy, ladies. I am giving you the okay. I've always struggled with this. I was always someone who was super controlling, always tried to manufacture things, had kind of a bruised ego at times when it pertained to dating or not getting my way. I have learned to set that free completely and tap more into my feminine. When I started doing that, my life became more fulfilling because I wasn't so worried all the time. I'm in the art of receiving. I'm in the art of allowing someone to lead. I am in the art of resting and understanding that my self-care is very important. I want you to prioritize these things in yourself. Speaking of self-care, the last way to live an abundant and fulfilling life is to work on your self-love and your self-respect daily, daily. The more love you give yourself, the more abundant your life becomes. It's the truth. A lot of us think that other things can provide us with the things that we technically should be just giving ourselves. A lot of the answers come from within when your journey begins. Self-love and self-care is a lot to do with attacking the things that you need to work on inside. Your self-love and self-respect journey should look something like valuing your time and energy, establishing boundaries, learning how to say no, self-forgiveness. I don't think you guys understand that you could be held back in life because you don't know how to forgive yourself. We are not perfect. We are human. Forgive yourself, ladies and gents. It's important that we work on the things that need to be worked on so that we can level up. So many wonderful things will happen for you and to you when you start to implement these things in your life, my loves. You will start to see your dating life improve, your work-life balance improve, your image improve, your image of yourself improve, your friendships, your relationships with family, your money. Scarcity mindset will prevent you from believing that you can attain financial success and freedom. You have to figure out what it is that you're struggling with so that you can be more abundant. Never let somebody tell you that any dream is too big, that you are too much, and that you can't do something. I always like to respond with, no, you can't, not me. Don't put that on me. I hope that this video helped you guys today as much as it kind of felt good even reading it back. Sometimes it's nice to just reflect. So I really appreciated this. Thank you for giving me your time, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone. Mwah.